morning everybody welcome back to the complete story 14 really if you need to review all critical care ultrasound in one case i recommend this case for you <clears throat> a 60 years old female patient admitted to our resuscitation room coming from another hospital where she stayed for 10 days treated from recent acute renal failure with frequent hemodialysis on this station room, a patient was severely distressed, desaturated, and there was a crackle all over the chest. X-ray, white chest. Really, the patient was in very bad shape. Echo at that time revealed moderate mitral regurg, tricuspid regurg, low ejection fraction, 20 to 30%. The patient has AF, fibrillating. patient was given a trial of PiPAP, anti-failure medication, digoxin, noradrenaline, started on CRRT and the broad coverage antibiotic, mirobinam and vancomycin. <clears throat> patient, unfortunately, didn't improve and admitted to our ICU after four days in resuscitation room. Here is the first critical care ultrasound assessment in our units. As you see, inferior vena cava is distended, non-collapsing, denoting the patient, cardiac and all or on the overload side. Here is the port chamber view, left ventricle, right ventricle, atria. You see here ballooning of the left atria. It is more large than left ventricle. Probably regurgitation lesion, patient fibrillating. But ejection fraction is not bad really. We are talking about 50%, 45 to 50% by visual assessment. It's improved compared to the resuscitation room echo. Here is the color view. This is the mitral regurge. <clears throat> posterior sinus view. This is the posterior part of the valve. There is moderate tricuspid regurge. This mosaic color. But contractility is not so bad. It's not bad. Another view. Here I concentrate on the parasternal view, aortic valve. You see here, uh, there is aortic regurg, moderate aortic regurg. It was not mentioned in the previous echo. Here is also tricuspid regurg, branching tricuspid regurg, at least moderate. So, we have moderate mitral regurg, moderate tricuspid regurg, aortic regurg, ejection fraction 50% improved compared to the previous echo. What's next? Next is the third most important organ in critical care ultrasound, which is the lung. Sorry. <laughs> this is the lung. Really, this was the image of the lung scan at this first uh, critical care ultrasound. <clears throat> it is smooth pleura, not sick, no subpleural consolidation, no inflammatory process, pelusa pleura, and dense P lines in, mo in most of the areas, B3 lines, which are homogeneous, all these going with transudate. Really, it is going with transudate. And the picture of cardiogenic renal, probably going with transudate. Also, pleural effusion going with Transudate, cardiac cause. Patient really was fully conscious, cooperative. She was maintaining the pH of oxygenation on BiPAP. The water in the lung mainly transudate, no subpleural consolidation, homogeneous, smooth pleura, and the patient has multiple vulvar regurg. So, already the patient is watched closely in the ICU. And the more important thing in this point, in resuscitation room, the patient is not ultrafiltrated properly. They used to remove only 100 cc per hour for 12 hours. This is not enough for this patient. So we decide to remove 400 cc per hour for good period to remove this <coughs> transudative fluids. And we believe at that point that blood pressure and ejection fraction can tolerate this ultrafiltration because it was normal. And the ejection fraction, as you know, it is almost 50 percent okay uh, and the patient is already watched it on icu so let us give a trial of pipe with with 
Probert Ultrafiltration. So, this is your Probert Ultrafiltration and the key is the patient watch it on my bed. At night, despite removal of 4 liter of patient, from patient, the patient desaturated and connected to mechanical ventilator. So, this is the second critical care ultrasound scan of the patient. A line starts to appear really. A line starts to appear for in the lung of the patient. That means we remove fluids from the lung. And if you see here, if you see here, to compare between the lung ultrasound first and second, here is the first dense B lines. Here, B lines start to be spaced really. In the same area, there is A line start to appear, and in this area where dense B lines was there, it started to, to some extent, to be spaced. That means we are remove, we removed uh, a transudate from the lung, which is good, which was our uh, decision. But in this second, in this second critical care ultrasound, we get this regurg lesion start to increase. We have regurg aortic regurg lesion, which increased compared to the first one. Regurg lesion is increased, which was not there. We was annoying of this regurg lesion. Increasing regurg lesion, improving lung water, deteriorating the patient. What's going on? This is the first sinking station, really. You need to sink. To be a good intensivist, you need to be flexible. You need to change your thought according to change of the patient. You need to be very flexible to deal with the, this critically ill patient. Lung water improved by this, by ultrafiltration, but aortic regurg worsening and almost normal size left ventricle. So you have worsening aortic regurg with not ballooning of the left side not belonging to left ventricle. So it is going with acute process. What is the acute process can occur to lead to acute aortic regurg in patient with dilated cancer on in place for more than two weeks? You should think about infective endocarditis. What's next? Fortunately, we have this surface in our ICU. Sorry, 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 now, at the same time, we got three post blood culture for coagulizing of staff. So now we have a clear picture. We have a patient with infective endocarditis leading to acute severe aortic regurg. She also had a valvular lesions like moderate mitral regurg, tricuspid regurg. So this patient had an acute valvular lesion with flash pulmonary edema and the sepsis due to coagulizing of staff. So we deseal meropenem, which mainly cover gram negative, and continue on vancomycin and add on rifampicin with gentamicin to be fully coverage, strongly coverage the staff organism. <clears throat> patient improved for a while, improved for three days, but started to desaturate again, and you need to start to sink again. As your patient is deteriorating, you need to keep sinking. Remember, to be good intensivist, you need to be flexible. <clears throat> This is the third scan, third critical care ultrasound. Critical care ultrasound is repeatable, and this is good. This is the last one you see, which is the B lines start to be spaced with smooth pleura, but here, for the first time, we start to get the, this subpleural consolidation. For the first time, for the first time for the patient lung scan, I, st I started to get this subpleural consolidations and irregular pleural line, which is noting that there is inflammatory process going on. It's not only transudate. Now, patient started to get exudate in his lung, and this is the cause of the second deterioration and desaturation. And fortunately, it was coincided with large amount of yellow secretion at the same time. <clears throat> so, what's going on? At the same time, I find this, this third critical ultrasound, I get a difference between right side here at the beginning and the right side here at that time. Here, moderate tricuspid regurg start to be severe tricuspid regurg. Here, right side smaller than left side. Here, start to be ballooned and compress the left side. So, there is acute strain of the right side here. What's causing that? It could be pulmonary embolus, this patient is bedridden, septic, renal failure, valvular heart disease, congested. So it could
could be a pulmonary embolism and will be very bad news. And at the same time, could be due to hypoxia because of this uh, VAB, VAB, hypoxia leading to acute increase of pulmonary blood pressure and lead to balloon of the right side. It could be ventilator related because the patient was on high setting really because of white lung. So what is going on? How can I differentiate between? Is it pulmonary embolism? or due to ventilator induced and hypoxia induced right ventricular strain. Let us see. I concentrate the scan on the lateral wall and the apex of the right ventricle, searching for McConnell signs, which are very specific to for pulmonary embolism. In McConnell signs, you will get contraction of the apex and akinesia or hypokinesia of the lateral wall. This is not the case here. Here, all the ventricle, right ventricle is contracting and it is sick wall. So it's going with strain. It's going with strain of hypoxia and the ventilator not going with pulmonary embolism. How can I get another, can I get another information? Yes, really. Let us see. This is the DVT study of the patient. This is the right femoral vein. Oh, it is not collapsing. Is it pulmonary embolism? Is, is it uh, DVT? Let us see. There is hyper echoic area here, but there is shadow here. There is shadow. Okay, let us see another view. It is the catheter. It is the femoral catheter, the LCS catheter in the right femoral vein. So our patient has no DVT and has no McConnell signs. So it's most probably due to ventilator and hypoxia related. Second sinking station, to be intensivist, good intensivist, you need to be flexible. Second sinking station with the second desaturation of the patient is there is now new subpleural consolidation, denoting occurrence of VAB and the dilated right ventricle and the increasing tricuspid regurgitation, most probably due to acute increase of pulmonary hypertension due to hypoxia and mechanical ventilation. It's not, most probably not due to pulmonary embolism. We added on neurobinum now because we need to cover VAB. We, we, in our units, there is a lot of, the most important organism is gram negative, not in MRC or staph. So we change, we add on neurobinum to control the VAB. Next day, repeat blood culture, repeat the gram negative bacilli. So the first was coagulase negative staph, second was gram negative bacilli. We already covered the day before, but unfortunately the patient developed septic shock, refractory septic shock at the multiple organ failure and the diet. Okay, here we saw almost all you can expect in critical care ultrasound. You saw B lines, congestion, and subpleural consolidation infection. You see valvular lesions. You saw the patient with infective endocarditis. You saw the catheter, femoral, femoral catheter in place. And I think it's a very good case for itching, and you <clears throat> need to see it again and again. And thank you for appreciating, listening. And see you again, inshallah, in the next complete story. Bye-bye.